Hey guys, welcome back to my workbench and my world of modeling. I'm Dan here as always, and in this video I'm going to be doing another cool product review on a brand new product straight from Athern in the Genesis line. It is the BNO Bay Window Caboose here. These are really popular prototypes, and this is the first time a caboose like this has been made in plastic. I'm very personally excited about this. We're going to be looking at the car straight out of the box, brand new here, like always. Um, we're going to be talking about the quick history of the car, uh, a little bit more detail about the model and everything like that, so we'll be going over all that in this video. So let's go ahead and get started. So I purchased this car directly from Athern Trains through Horizon Hobbies. I pre-ordered this particular car for $109.99 if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I'm sure the prices will come down in certain times when, by the time they end up on other retailers and on eBay. You'll be able to get them a little bit cheaper, but that is just how much I personally paid for this particular car. So here it is, the Athern Genesis BNO Caboose, uh, the C3984. This is the car we're going to be reviewing today. But before I get into this particular car, I want to say it's a great day for any chassis modelers who have been dying for some prototypically accurate BNO and CNO cabooses. Up to this point, we really haven't had anything to offer in terms of prototypically accurate cabooses. And it's unfortunate because of the amount of chassis modelers out there and how popular it is. It's taken this long for any company to really recognize how important these cars are to any uh, accurate time period of late 70s or 80s uh, chassis modelers. Uh, again, this is the first time this car has been produced in plastic. Um, for chassis guys or any CSX modelers or any people like that or anyone, uh, say a buff like me who's interested in these prototypes, your only option has been to either heavily kit bash a car, for example this one I made a while back in a video, the BNO C3985. Um, you know, you've only been able to either scratch build them, kit bash them, things like that, or your other option is brass. Here's an Overland brass car that I actually bought a while back. Now, the only difference with these cars is they're a different manufacturer, and these are a later version of a C27A car, but they're very similar models. Uh, so it leaves a real gap in available models for the Chessy chassis group of modelers really um, you just haven't had any kind of accurate models that's very disappointing like I said uh, but Athen has recently changed that they've offered the brand new version of this car here and again I'm very excited about this so we're going to be comparing this car uh, and talking about some of its history real quick uh, these cars were built in the 70s uh, late 60s early 70s and I think the last production run was in 1979 by a different company I believe FGE was the last one to build them. So uh, this particular car represents one of the early versions of this model. So we're going to be doing a live unboxing, like I said. We'll be comparing it to some uh, prototype photos that I have of similar cars. I can't actually find this exact car number, but they're all pretty similar in this production run. So I'll be looking at some prototype photos to really carefully examine this. Um, for freight cars, you know, I have a particular level of detail that I go for with freight cars. Locomotives I hold to a high standard and cabooses I hold to a relatively high standard of accuracy. I really want to see these being done right. So this is the first production again that Athern has done of these so I'm really going to be paying attention to prototype photos especially for this car to see if there's any differences or anything like that that I need to point out. But uh, again this will be a live unboxing so let's go ahead and take this out of the car and see if there's anything wrong. Uh, we'll point out as we go here. So if we take the car out of the sleeve, it's the standard Athern Genesis packaging like I said. Inside the box here we've got some spare roller bearing caps. That's the standard Athern Genesis feature. On the inside of the box we have some paperwork here. This is the warranty card. Here there's some information. I believe this is the DCC function for the car because these do have working lights. Uh, my car I don't think has working lights, but some of them do. Some of the uh, models that they're offering do have working marker lights and things like that. So this is the NC setup guide for all that. And again, uh, CV functions, everything like that. An exploded parts diagram, all your basic information on the assembly of the car. And of course, spare parts if you need to order some. So let's go ahead and set that aside. In the package as well, we have some little lanterns, which is pretty neat. They actually have the little uh, square type marker lights. So that's a pretty cool feature. A lot of these cars had those. Set that aside. And standard Athern Genesis packaging. You got the little sleeve. We'll just extract the car from that. And then you can see it's a top, top clamshell style box. Just take that out. Open the packaging here. And we'll remove the car. Wow. Jeez. So, uh, first first thing I noticed right out of the box, these cars are very heavy. There's a lot of weight in this thing. So we'll go ahead and put that down and I don't see any missing or floating parts in the box. So that's a good sign. So let's go ahead and set all this packaging aside and we'll start this exciting review. So here it is, the BNO C3984. All chassis modelers rejoice. We finally have an accurate C27 style caboose here. Okay, so looking at the car outside of the box, everything looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this car. 
Uh, looking at the front ends, we've got a lot of nice separately applied details, which is pretty standard Genesis detailing. We've got separately applied grab irons on the front here inside. we got a really nicely done end door. Uh, we have see-through walkway steps. We have the accurate style early step for these cars, which is pretty cool. We have the coupler lift bar and separate bracket here. We have a really nicely done brake wheel, fine photo etch pieces for the end railings and guards. We actually have the really cool little air whistle which these cars have. I'm actually really excited to see that because no manufacturer has made that up to this point, so that's pretty cool. Uh, these cars are also pretty neat. They have the extended coupler pockets, as you can see here. They're like cushion coupler pockets, so that's pretty sweet. Standard McHenry style knuckle coupler. We have an extended air hose with bracket. And again, a really nice uh, wealth of fine printing and painting on the ends. On the sides of the car, we have really nicely done trucks with the actual generator. These have the rotating bearing caps, as I said. The large battery box door on the top here and ash pan. We have really nicely done printing and painting on the sides. And the chassis system has absolutely beautiful paint schemes for their cabooses. They have the safety schemes, and then they have the standard chassis system safety cross scheme, as this is known, because it has the cross track safety logo on the side. On the bay windows we have the accurate photo etch window screens which are very finely done. We have the window glazing and everything on the sides. We have the correct three window style side panel here. We have finely done separately applied grab irons and again a really nice wealth of fine printing on the sides as you can see. Now the roof on this car is really nice. It has the correct pattern on the roof here, the X pattern roof. We have the toilet vent and antenna. We have the smoke jack here on the top. And if we actually get up close, you can see they have the supports. That's a very nicely done piece. And they actually modeled the little vents on the roof as well. These are little opening vents. Uh, so that's a cool little feature on this car. With the model carefully at hand, we can actually get a good zoomed in look at the ends here. You can see again that really nicely done spray guard detail handrail detail. We have all the fine printing and painting. I really like these red reflectors. That's a really cool touch on these cars that Chessie had. I like the white trimmed grab irons and everything as well. That's a really nice touch. Again, really fine printing and painting on the ends, on the door. Everything looks really good. On the opposite side of these cars, we have a little bit different detail variations for the underbody here, as you can see. Uh, again, the really nice Athern Genesis trucks. We have the ash pan detail here. We got the air reservoir, plumbing, piping, the brake cylinder, everything there is really nicely done. And we'll look at the underbody detailing more closely in a second, but it's very nicely done. Again, photo etch steps and platforms, which are nicely done. Separately applied grab irons, really finely done photo etch screen detail. Probably some of the finest I've seen in any model. Uh, the Tangent Cabooses have similar photo etch pattern, and they're actually pretty close in terms of the fine mesh screen. It's uh, pretty nicely done. Uh, again, really fine printing and painting, and you'll notice the window variations on this side is a little bit different to the opposite side. It's a pretty cool touch on these international cars here. So you have the toilet window here, and then the passenger window here, and then of course the bay windows. Uh, again, really nicely done um, printing. I really like that Cots block stencil. That looks really cool. You have an oil fill here, and then there's a look at all of the chimney detail, the vent detail, everything else. So it's very hard to see here, but these cars actually do have an interior. They have the interior seats and everything laid out accurately. Athern uh, was priding themselves on being able to do the complete interiors. Uh, I personally think it's pretty cool. Uh, is it a little bit overkill? I mean, sure, I mean, you can't really see it, but you know it's there, and that's pretty cool. I do like those seats. They do, uh, they do look really nice inside these cars. That's actually a detail I used to add on all my Overland cars and a... Uh, uh, other cars that I had. I'd like to be able to add those seats and Athens has installed them on this model so that is a pretty cool little touch. Now here's where things get really interesting. Look at that underbody detailing. That's really really finely done. You got all the accurate detailing. Uh, again you can see those photo etched walkways on the platforms over that coupler box. That's really nicely done. On the trucks here again the really nice Athern Genesis trucks with the roller bearings. Uh, you can see the electrical pickups on the trucks installed. That's a really nice touch that Athern does on their cars. They have the electrical pickups installed. That used to be something you had to do from scratch which was very annoying. Also, something I hated to do on these cars originally when I had to scratch build them was adding these underbody detailing. With the Athern Genesis model, you don't have to do it because everything is already installed. And again, everything looks really good. I'm really, really satisfied with this underbody detailing. It looks exceptional.
I just tested the couplers on both ends of this car and they actually do match the KD height gauge very well. Uh, that's kind of a thing I've pointed out before with these McHenry couplers. I know a lot of people don't like them and with plastic couplers you got to be careful because these can bend and warp a little bit even related to temperature and stress like that. Uh, but in this particular case right out of the box these couplers were actually fine so I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so overall I'm very happy with this model out of the box. It looks really great and it closely captures the look of these BNO cabooses. And again, that paint scheme is just phenomenal. The detailing is phenomenal. There's a lot to like about these cars. Now, all that being said, there are some discrepancies I want to point out here. The first thing is a very minor thing, and it's these grab irons. The grab irons are a curved style of grab, and they have this little bracket at the top. It's a little overdone. There shouldn't be this bend that you can see at the bottom here. And if I actually zoom in here, you can see that bend. Um, most of these cars had the curve grab and then it just went straight into the car body. It should look exactly like it does at the top where it just goes straight into the car body. It shouldn't have this little bracket. That's a very minor thing though and I can let that slide because it's not a huge discrepancy that, you know, completely ruins the look of the model overall. Something I do got to point out that does kind of uh, dampen the look of the car is the lack of the installed lanterns and then the end lighting. When these cars were built they had the lanterns installed. Now in Athern's defense here they did provide these lanterns here and they're in the separate parts bag, right? However, in that regard they did not provide any drilled holes uh, any instructions for the mounting location of these lanterns, which is a little unfortunate because trying to install these can be a little bit difficult because you might accidentally screw up the finish on the car trying to drill holes out or even glue them to the model. It's a little bit of a risk. So I kind of would have preferred Athern maybe, maybe had installed those ahead of time with the car. I'm a little disappointed to see that. Now, relating to the end light, there should be a big red light on both ends of this car. As far as I know, most of these cars were built with that light. Uh, if I'm wrong, any of you modern chassis modelers or anything like that can come in and correct me, but I'm pretty sure these cars were built with that light. And just as a reference, this is what that light looks like. It, some of them were a flashing light and some of them stayed solid. On my scratch-built model here, I modeled that. On the Athern cars, they don't have this. Now, some cars in these uh, in this first run do have that light, as far as I know, but with this particular car, it does not, and it should. So I'm a little disappointed to not see that. And again, with them uh, talking about the powered lighting, I was really looking forward to maybe having some powered lights for this model, uh, but they don't have them. So I'm a little disappointed by that. It's, a, I think, a minor detail discrepancy here, but I think they should have maybe just went ahead and, by default, added those. Again, it would have been a cool feature to even have maybe that red light, and it's a hard detail to install because that's a kind of a major modification if you wanted to add that red light because for one thing no one makes a casting of that light you'd have to scratch build one and then you'd have to wire it up so you know again a little disappointed by that uh, as a comparison the overland model actually has these working lights they actually built their cars with that light uh, Athern chose not to so again a little disappointed by that but I don't think it ruins the appearance of the car it's just a personal preference by me I kind of wish they would have had those working lights but Overall, it's still a nice looking car. I still think it looks really good. Uh, if I wanted to add those lights, I could do it, but it would be a little bit of work, and it's something I wish Athern would have done. So that's just something I thought I would probably point out here. The next minor detail discrepancy I need to point out here is the way they did the extended air hose. I don't particularly like Athern's air hoses because they're very stiff parts, as you can see. I kind of like a flowing look, like a rubber hose or something like that. They're always very stiff and they're too short, in my personal opinion. Also, on these particular air hoses, there should be a T handle that runs all the way down to around here. It would connect to a very large bracket on this air hose and Athern did not model that on this car but these cars should have that so again a little disappointed they didn't model that particular detail and just as reference what I'm talking about I modeled on my particular car you, if you actually look here you can see that T handle that runs all the way to the end of the air hose and you can see that pronounced looking bracket uh, that's something Athern chose to not model on their particular car and I kind of wish it was there something else I feel is a a little bit wacky as these coupler lift bars. I'm not sure what's going on with these, but they look a little bit thick. Also, there's practically no handle on them. The handle should extend way down on this model, and for whatever reason, they chose to model it with basically no handle at all, and I think it looks a little unrealistic. That's honestly a part that I would change out myself and swap to a brass piece, and I just, you know, change that altogether because I don't like the fact it doesn't have that handle. It almost looks like it's just been broken off. Uh, so I'm very disappointed by that, honestly, too. 
Okay, two other things on the ends that I need to point out too. Just by my personal eye, my personal view here, I feel like these grabs on the ends are a little bit too thick. Compare these railings to what's on the ends, these separately applied grab irons for example. The handrail should match that depth because it's the exact same size of wire for the most part. So you can see these are a little bit thick, a little bit chunky. I don't like this uh, very unpronounced bend here. There should be a very pronounced uh, L bend to this wire here that connects to the roof portion. Uh, it's very poorly done because again these wires are just so thick. Uh, but you know to my eye it bothers me. Some others it might not but that's just something I pointed out too. Also on the ends there should be a window screen on this door. Again Atherin chose not to model that. I'm not sure why uh, but these cars were built with those rock screens installed. While we're talking about window screens, you can see Athern did model the window screens and the brackets on the bay windows, but they did not model them on the side windows. I'm not sure why, because most of these cars when built had the rock screens, as they were called, on all of these windows, except the bathroom window on the opposite side, which would be on this side. Uh, for whatever reason, they chose not to model that, and basically what the brackets would be would look like this. On the Overland car here, you can see these rock screens with the little slides. That's what should be over on these windows, because at the time of these cars being built, vandalism was a big issue, rocks were being thrown in these windows, crew members were getting hurt, and in some cases even killed by projectiles being thrown by uh, wary teenagers just trying to cause as much mayhem as possible at the time. So they installed FRA glazing and rock screens to these windows, but for whatever reason, Atherin chose not to model the rock screens on this car. Now, if you look in the ahead maybe a couple years, yes, some of these window screens did get removed. However, I kind of would have preferred that Athern, with them modeling this car, basically factory fresh as built, that they would have included these rock screens, and they didn't. So I'm a little disappointed by that. Now, a remedy to this uh, would be to maybe get Tangent's window screen kit for similar bay window cars in the Chessie scheme. Uh, they actually include the brackets and the window screens for their version of this car. And you can actually buy that kit, and you could probably install those window screens, which is actually something I might do for this particular car, just because I do kind of want those details to be represented on my model. But again, it's a discrepancy I kind of want to point out, because I'm a little disappointed that they did not include that on this car. Okay, so at this point, you guys might be thinking I've been a little bit nitpicky on this particular car, but I do got to point these things out. You know, these are details that were installed on these cars pretty much from the factory for the most part. I kind of would have wished Atherin maybe had installed them, uh... You know, but that's again my personal opinion. I will probably go and change some of these things on this car when it comes time because my idea with this car is to weather it up a little bit, but just basically model it to represent the basically what it would have looked like brand new in its time period with only some minor weathering. Uh, so again, it's some things I wish that would have maybe been installed on this car. Now, Atherin does have a second run in the works right now. They have some other paint schemes coming. I'm sure down the line they'll be doing some other variations of this car where maybe they will install some of these details. Uh, but again, for the first run, I kind of wish they would have maybe gotten right all of those details right out of the box. I think that would have been a little bit cooler. But again, overall, it's still a really nice car, and it's still a really nice, relatively accurate version of these beautiful-looking cabooses. Alright guys, so that's going to pretty much wrap up this review. I'm really happy with this particular car. I'm really happy that we finally have one of these cars in plastic. This is a real godsend for any Chessie modelers. And if you want to get some of these cars, get them now. They are selling out very fast. Uh, however, I did check as of today, and a lot of hobby shops do have these pretty well stocked up, so hopefully they'll stay in stock a little while to really give the guys a good chance to stock up on these cars. And this is definitely a caboose that you want to buy in quantity, because like I said, Chessie System had multiple cars uh, in this production, and later productions as well. So you might even want to get two or three of these, honestly, because again, they're very common on these manifest freights back in that time period. Again, very happy with the car. I'm glad to see it come to fruition. I look forward to seeing some other paint scheme variations by Atherin down the road. Uh, but for now, this is going to wrap up this video, guys. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video. Take it easy.